Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to the re-recording of Mining Your Max, episode 19. I had gotten three quarters of the way through the testing and all of a sudden I got invalid video error message and the file was erased. Oh joy. I'm not going to repeat the gold plated contact testing because I've done the arcing testing on these and I don't want that to affect the voltage drop. But I'll let you know what the results were. This is the Defiant Designs TS Triple 18650 squonking mech and we got with the stock where it shipped with gold plated contact set got a voltage drop reading here of 64 millivolts and we took a look at uh, i took a look at the contact and it's fairly rough contact the same as they were for the uh, ds the dual squonking uh 18650 mod that they make so there's opportunity there with that contact sanded smooth like i did for the ds to improve its performance but right now uh, the ds was 95 millivolts this is at 64 with the gold we're going to test the silver plated contact set which i have in here as a reference the purge slam piece side firing mech in brass was about 73 millivolts so this is doing a little bit better than that but not anything noticeable and the best performing mod so far were the copper broadside mods admiral and broadside which are in 25 to 30 millivolts which are measured here so it's the usual setup 30 amps being drawn by this electronic load from a 60 amp power supply above it at 3.5 volts we read the voltage drop off here by monitoring the atomizer and what that we'd send that 30 amps through the atomizer through the mech through these solid aluminum slugs and back out then I subtract the effect later for the table that I'll show you, subtract the effect of the atomizer and the slugs, and you're left with the voltage drop just of the mech. But for the voltage drop measurements I'm talking about now, it's the readings that we get here. The 95 millivolts for the gold plated contact for the DS, 64 millivolts for this one. Uh, it was 64 millivolts for the silver plated contacts that were smoother in the DS, and also about 64 millivolts when I sanded the gold plated contacts for the DS smooth. But since we're already starting at 64 here with the rough gold plated contact, I'm hoping the performance will be even better once I sand it smooth. And hopefully that made sense. All right, let's get this set up for the gold plated uh, test. Excuse me, silver plated test. Okay, quick test fire to make sure this goes to zero volts. We're at about 20 microvolts or 10 microvolts, 0 0.01 millivolts. That's good. What I'll do is I press the button to close the contacts. Then I fire a two second pulse at 30 amps and we read the voltage drop. That's so there's no arcing damage by closing the contacts, then having the current go. Current stops, then opening the contact. I can avoid any arcing damage from building up and remove that as a variable from the test. And then we do arcing testing separately and it just makes it a lot easier to sort out performance particularly for the best performers and let's start firing a pulse 67 67 67 doesn't get much more consistent than that 68 switching just a fingertip 67, let's try it up like this. Actually, that's, there we go. It can be hard when it's tethered to a cable. Ah, that wasn't pressing hard at all. This is a really good weight, as, as I was doing. 68, but using my second finger, not pressing as hard. 68, I'm in a slightly different part of the button. 70, that was the edge of the button. 69. Let's call it 69. Interestingly, 69 with the silver plating, the gold plating was 64. On the DS, it was kind of reversed. 95 for the gold, 64 for the silver, which to me, it just helps reinforce that it's not about the plating. The plating is very, very thin. Gold plated copper, silver plated copper, it makes no difference in terms of performance. For maintenance or what you prefer, it can certainly make a difference. What matters is it's going to be the surface smoothness, the roughness 
of the contacts, which affects the surface area, the amount of metal that's actually touching. If you have two little tiny high points, that's it. If you've got millions of little high points, you know, from a fairly smooth surface, now I've got much lower resistance because I have a lot more surface area touching. And let's get this set up for the arcing test, and then we'll take a look at the contacts for the gold and for the silver. Okay, and certainly, uh, certainly for any parallel uh, device, make sure all the batteries are in the proper orientation. Typically, all facing the same way. The Defiant Design says positive. I'm really sure of that because if you flip one around, you end up short circuiting two of the batteries together, and that will always be bad news. What I'm going to do now is fire this 200 times. You won't have to watch. And then we'll take a look at the contacts and check for arcing damage with the silver contacts and compare that to the gold contacts. And, oh, I've got uh, Molycell P26As uh, in here, freshly charged, that I'm using. And 1, 2, 3, 5, 196, 197, 198, 199, excuse me, 200. I can't even say the numbers now. It's a 0 0.1 load that's incredibly hot. Ouch. Now what I have to do is get the contacts out of here. You might notice that this is the silver bushing that's here, excuse me, gold bushing it's here, and it's supposed to be the silver one. I, I, I seem to be cursed when it comes to these bushings. On the DS, I tried getting out to make the switch from gold to silver, and <laughs> I didn't know it was reverse threaded, so I just went, oh, I can't get it out, can't get it out, okay. Defiant Designs uh, let me know that it is reverse threaded, so I wanted to make the conversion to this in the video that got deleted, so I started you know, back it out, got a quarter turn, and started to seize. I'm like, hmm, okay, let me try a couple times. I thought, well, maybe it's just a burr. So I went further, had a right size, you know, a nice big screwdriver and everything, but it caught up, and the aluminum galled and started to smear, and it completely seized up. I cannot get this out. But it, to me, that just means it's an incredibly low resistance connection, so I'm not worried about it at all for the testing, but it is the gold bushings in there now and not the silver one and I'm going to start removing all the screws and get the contacts out okay pieces out there's the screw that the button presses down against the bar it presses against this point here and I will take a look now and I'll put up a macro photograph for you and I'll take a look at the screw I actually have a hard time trying to find where the contact point is it's just tiny little bits of uh, uh, little evidence of contact points. Very, very little damage there. Maybe touching it more points across the face. And the, the bar here, I see two points of contact, maybe three, that are next to each other. I'm checking here now. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing a couple of points. So those points, you'll see it in the macro photograph, but the points down here on it. And let's compare it to the gold plated copper and the gold definitely has the same high ridges near where the slots are cut and that's where the contact point is but it actually did the same to slightly better than the silver and then the bar yeah up a, up along here along the top there's some uh, arcing points so maintenance is required and you are going to have to get in here disassemble it and uh, take care of that arcing because arcing begets more arcing. You want to address it. You don't want it just building up. It will affect your performance too. So we've got 64 millivolt drop for the TS for the gold, 69 millivolts, which is just, I mean, that's the same thing. Five millivolt difference is nothing. It's really a reflection of the surface smoothness for the particular screw and bar, this particular screw and bar. And now what I want to do is, what I did for the DS video, I want to sand this one smooth because there are a couple of ridges on this gold plated screw here where it's making contact. Take it down a bit, try to make it a little bit smoother, a little bit flatter, and start to see if we can improve on that 60 more, 64 millivolt uh, drop.
Okay, these are the parts that I've sanded down. The three points here on both sides for the bar for the uh, positive part of the battery. This is the part that gets pushed up and down that this contact sits in that touches this. So I wanted this and this in case there are any burrs smoothened out. The three contacts that touch the negative part of the battery, it flattened those out. And then the three, three screws that go in here that touch the top of the battery, I also wanted the high points taken down on those. So I used, all I had was a 220 grit sandpaper and then finished off with a little bit of burnishing with a scotch Bright pad, then cleaned with alcohol. I'll now put it together and we'll do the voltage drop test. Okay, and we had before 64 millivolt voltage drop with the stock contacts. And we'll do a test here. So go to zero volts. Yes. Okay, and let's see what we get now. Wow, 38. 38. 38. 38. Nice and consistent, significantly lower voltage drop. I don't think you're going to notice the voltage drop difference or performance difference while you're vaping between 64 millivolts and 38 millivolts. That's a tiny part of the huge overall voltage drop from your battery, atomizer, and everything else. But it points to how this is a pretty good performing. Both of these units, the DS and the TS, are pretty good performing box mechs. And we're starting to get down into uh, the range for the good performing tube mods. And, and I don't remember the numbers now, but you can check the mech mod voltage drop table that I do down in the description section and start to comparing these. But I'm very impressed with 38. Now I smoothed down a couple more pieces than I did for the DS when I started smoothing out some contacts. For this I did just about everything. And it also starts to point the ways as to how the manufacturers for mechs and, and other devices how you can get the most performance out of it if they have already really smooth screws and put on smooth plating that's great or do it maybe solid silver screws where it's ease of maintenance compared to copper and but make them smooth right from the start that's all for today thank you for watching